This is our Audioversity series for Rivage PM Systems. And today we're taking a closer look at the control surfaces, how they're laid out and what facilities are available. Between the PM3, 5, 7 and 10, there are obviously some differences, though the general workflow remains the same. So let's start with the new PM5. Take a close look at the faders, because this is where your fingers will spend most of their time. All Rivage consoles use two or three banks of 12 faders, plus two master faders. Next to each bank is a field of layer buttons. First, you select which type of layer you want to access. Inputs, outputs, DCA, or custom. Then you select the channel numbers to see. So you have a selection of fixed layers where you can always find the inputs and outputs in numerical order. And you have 12 custom layers per bank. Or you used to <laughs> with previous versions. Now it's increased to 30 custom layers where you can program any channel to appear on any fader and the master faders are also customizable, useful for monitor engineers who want a Q fader. Just above the layer buttons, we have sends on fader, also useful for monitor engineers. Select which sends you want to see, either from the screen or by selecting a mix or matrix bus from another bank. Above the faders, you see a row of encoders. On the PM7 and 10, there are two rows. So on the PM5, this row has two purposes. Press the encoder assign button to choose their role. Either assign them to a specific function like analog gain or high pass filter or dynamics threshold, or let them work with the screen. Whichever controls you highlight on the screen will be adjusted on the encoders. And see, there's also a touch and turn encoder ready to adjust any parameter you select, particularly useful for the plugins, which ha may have a classic look where the knobs don't exactly align. Now take a look here between the fader banks where there are 12 user-defined keys and four banks. These can be customized with all kinds of features such as mute groups, scene recall, talkback, effect tap tempo and screen bookmarks. I always like to have one set for fandom power. Hold it down and use the channel select keys to switch it on or off as you see here. Now let's take a look at the selected channel. On the PM7 and 10, it takes a large area and includes almost every function, including silk, delay, recall safe, and 12 mix send encoders. On the PM5, there are fewer encoders, but there is an additional screen, which could be preferable to fans of touchy gestures. And each screen has a new send assign control, which helps to quickly set send levels and pan from the selected input to multiple outputs. Lastly, on the far right, we see controls for talkback input, monitor outputs, and the system button is used to power off the console correctly. Then the two USB ports are used for stereo recording and audio playback, WAV files or MP3, and for loading and saving scene memories, libraries and complete console files. These are fully compatible between all Rivage console sizes. Take a quick look under the armrest where you will find the headphone sockets. PM5 has one for each Q bus, as does the PM7. The PM3 lives with just one, while the big PM10 surface 
has the luxury of two at each end. So two operators can work without having to skip over each other's wires. Now to the rear panel, where all Rivage consoles have a similar range of connections. First, the utilities. Dual power supplies for redundancy. Lamp sockets. Fan speed switch. And a reset button. You'll only need that if you ever need to restart the software running the screens without stopping the audio. Then there are MIDI and GPI connections for external control and three USB ports which can be used for memory drives, keyboard for typing names and mouse for screen navigation. The console network is used for connecting to the DSP engine and the PC network port is for connecting the editor software and the StageMix iPad app. We'll tell you how to get that connected in a later video. There are also some audio connections on the rear panel for local equipment. Each console has two MY cards, which are the same slots as those found on the CL and QL consoles, as well as PM5D, LS9, DM1000, and so on. There are more than 30 different cards to choose from, with 4, 8, or 16 channels in and out. Then we have the eight Omni inputs and outputs. On PM3 and PM5, they are the same specification as RIO D2 mic preamps. On PM7 and PM10, they are the hybrid mic preamps with silk. Finally, some AES EBU in and out with sample rate converters. PM5 has four channels in and out, while PM7 and PM10 have eight. PM3 doesn't have any, but remember, AES EBU cards can be used in the MY slots. The next two videos will focus on the DSP engines and the IO racks, so we're going to find out a lot more about all the connectivity options really soon. Bye for now.